Hey, welcome back to the Artie Lang Show from New Orleans, Super Bowl 2013, from a tax write-off for DirecTV, the <laughs> Artie Lang Compound, uh, complete with a, a float and the likeness of my head, which is very embarrassing. <laughs> I'm here with Brent Stover from CBS Sports, and uh, look who's here, comedic legend, one of my comedy heroes, who was on the show last year. <laughs> 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 he was on the show last year, which was only a month ago, you were yeah. in New York, uh, the great Harry Shearer. What's up, Harry? The mediocre Harry Shearer couldn't show up. <laughs> I came in this place. I'm, I'm great because I'm doing? in New Orleans. I, I'm always happy when I'm in the city. You know, explain that to me. So you, you, you're an L.A. guy. You grew up in L.A. Grew up in L.A. Grew up in the business. In the bi no, in the business. In the bi in the business. In the business. <laughs> and uh, and what what brought you to New Orleans first, and what made you get a place? Here? 1988, I came to Jazz Fest, uh, right? Wi and uh, Jazz Fest is great, but then I just looked at the town, out, you know, around Jazz Fest, and I went, "What the fuck have I been not doing here?" <laughs> you can't curse, but oh, you can't. Okay, all right, don't worry. About it. Right. Uh, <laughs> no, but you're right. It's the most unique. I went to Jazz Fest in 1996, and I w I saw. Wynton Marsalis on stage with Branford Marsalis and Lionel Hampton before he died. Yeah. And uh, better to, to see him then than after he died. <laughs> <laughs> he was Sh slower. Than <laughs> and Shaka Khan. Yeah. And uh, in a tent. And uh, you're right. You look around. It's the most unique place on oh, the planet. Oh, it's it's an amazing city. Yeah. And uh, the more it, so I kept coming back here, and then fortunately my my then new wife uh, fell in love with it just right. as I did, and so we bought a place here in '96. And then bought a big old place in uh, 2006, uh, and I just, I mean, it's the kind of place you know. I'm not the most people loving person in the world. No, me neither. I don't think a lot of comedians are. Yeah, but, uh, I mean, <laughs> whatever you're getting off of me, it's not personal. I know. I understand. Yeah. Believe me. Uh, believe me. I understand that yeah. more than anybody. Okay. <laughs> but when I walk out the door, so I, you know, my my default position is to stay in the house. Right. Of course. But when I'm here. Every time I leave the house to go out into the street to do some errand or something, something good happens. Yeah. It, it actually, you know, I, I feel the same way because I, I like sitting in a dark room a lot of the time, too. <laughs> I, have, I have depression and everything like that. Yeah. Like, like, Brent, I'm trying to, I'm trying to learn from Brent because he's, he's much different. But Is he a cheerful guy? He's a cheerful guy. He's a great guy. And I, it's, well, it's, a few more years of working with CBS will <laughs> cure that. But. You know, I get I get paid pretty good money, Harry, to, yeah. to sit. It's like a front row seat at an Artie show. You know, yeah, people yeah, pay yeah. good money for right. us. So. <laughs> right. well, All my friends are jealous. At least thirty of me. bucks. So there you go. <laughs> at least thirty bucks. But uh, no, what is it about comedians? Because I find as I get older too, it's worse. I just have a contempt for. people. Well, there's your first mistake. Don't get older. <laughs> <laughs> a lot of the great comics didn't get older. That's right. <laughs> hey, screw this. Uh, no, I mean it's just you know. Look. Uh, do you think that has to do with being funny? I don't know. I mean, I, it's a choice about how you look at the crap that's going on. You either right. go, or you yeah, go, yeah, yeah. I got to I got to laugh at this. Yeah, right. of course. You get annoyed by the world. Yeah. And, just, uh, cause and, I, and there's a lot of material. They're making more material like that every day. Well, forget it. I mean, no, I, you're right. I just, you look at the world and it, there's more and more, any comic who says there's nothing to talk about. Holy. Is, well, you know, but it's the same thing as, as you see these, CNN is the most notorious example of, God, what are we going to do to fill 24 hours if we don't put <laughs> Piers Morgan on? Well, you know, get a camera. Just open the door. Get a camera someplace other than Washington, D.C. Right. There's plenty of crap going on that we need to know about. I was oh, no, we, we'd rather have, you know, James and Mary. No, they fired James and Mary yeah, this yeah, week. Yeah. But they weren't working out. No, they weren't <laughs> arguing enough. They were getting along too well. There wasn't enough fake arguing. Going yeah. On. No, but you're right. I always say that about Letterman. Letterman wanted to go to to Burbank to shoot the Tonight Show in the early '90s, and he was forced for whatever reason to uh, stay in New York. And look what happened. All he had to do was open up the door on West 53rd Street, yeah. and he had that deli guy, the, the uh, Indian guys. He had well, four years of material just by opening know, the door. I'm old enough to remember Steve Allen used to do a show in yeah. Hollywood, and he would just open the door and in great a, characters. In but Hollywood. in the middle of Hollywood. In the middle of Hollywood, oh, right, right, not right. in. Burbank. Not in Burbank. You that was the big to, mistake. Yeah, yeah, exactly. You can open the door for two years in Burbank, and you know, <laughs> do you think, only rats come in. Do you think part of your your, your cynical uh, cynical? Attitude, yeah. No. <laughs> the guys in Washington are cynical. I'm sorry. I'm skeptical, <laughs> okay. and I'm fed up. Part of your skeptical. Yeah. Attitude. Do you think growing up in show business, do you think that makes you have a feeling like? And I mean this in the nicest way, but that you're that you're hipper than everybody else, and in a way, you know, everybody. Any sentence that starts with "I mean this in the nicest <laughs> possible way" is not going to end well. But but do no, you, you know, I I've met both of your parents, and I mean this in the <laughs> nicest possible way. 
It's the same as the no disrespect. No, but. no, yeah, right, right. all due respect. No yeah, offense. Yeah. No offense. Hey, Shaq, all due respect, but. <laughs> but do you think it's made you like? You know what I mean? Like people in show business, uh, even when they get in as when they're older, they they seem to. They're jaded and they and they get uh, cynical and 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 they think they're hipper than the rest of the world. No, 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 no. I, I you know, I think being in, in the business as a kid uh, made me less desperate. Right. Gave me more patience. Uh, people who come into the business in their in their teens or twenties think, "Holy crap! If I don't take this job, if I don't do this gig, I'm done. I got like four minutes to make it." Yeah. And it gave me a sense of there's a lot of time. Um, God, you'd think the direct opposite would be true. So, so you're saying that I am at, at the age of 35, I had a taxable income of zero. <laughs> Seriously, now right. I I made some cash money. Oh, I'm not. Yeah. But, yeah. Um, and by 35, you'd already been on SNL, right? At least uh, once. No, that was the year I first went to oh, SNL. Oh, okay, that's the year you went to. Yeah, SNL. but that's what I mean. I was I was not doing. I was doing stuff that I really loved in my 20s, but it wasn't making a big national impression, and I, it it did. I wasn't pleased about, about right. that. But I just thought I'm taking my time. I'm doing it. I'm doing it my way. <laughs> uh, but you know, because I'd been in the business and I'd seen what the, the have you ever seen the the documentary about Joan Rivers? Yes, a piece of work or, or whatever. Yeah. the one just came out. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. And what's so brave about it to me is that she's just it, she doesn't do this literally. Right. No, she's saying, "Look at me." It's look completely at, everything. Look at the yeah. freaking desperation. Yeah. Yeah. Of yeah. a person. 65, 70 years into show business, right. looking at her diary going, I got nothing for this month. What You're the right. hell should I do? I should fucking, you know, <laughs> Screaming at her assistant. I should kill myself. <laughs> yeah, uh, and, and the reason she takes the Comedy Central roast, like, I don't want to be insulted by these idiots who I barely know. Yeah. And, and how much she hates Kathy Griffin's success. Yeah. It really did show all the warts. All of that. You're all right. of that. And that never dies. No, you know? it doesn't. It, it you, doesn't. Can, you can achieve a lot of success and you're still going, and Tuesday I'm doing what? <laughs> but, you know, here's this is interesting, man. As a fan of you, what describe your life between the ages of like 20 and 35 then what what, what how did you find oh sorry um, <laughs> did you do stand up did you did you no, write like no, what what I brought was, you to the SNL year i was uh, first of all i was uh, trying everything except show business right so i taught school okay, yeah, yeah. i uh, worked in the state legislature in sacramento california because i thought i might want to go into government or politics oh and then about See, i never knew that yeah. yeah about 24 25 i came back and i was in a comedy group and we did daily satirical radio shows okay in la and this was before satellite so it didn't get syndicated we were huge in L.A. So you started in radio. Yeah, started in radio. Right. But not known anywhere else. Then we did records. We, we had a, a record deal on Reprise and did a, a record I was really happy with. And, and the people at Reprise turned out to be flaming assholes <laughs> <laughs> in the record business. Who could imagine? You know, so you, you know yeah. there's a thing called the Rhythm and Blues Foundation. It raises money every year right. for the Rhythm and Blues people who got screwed yeah. by the record business. They, they, yeah. it, it, that that seems like the mafia. The there's business. a foundation for that. Yeah. Um, they actually had to start a foundation. Yeah. <laughs> then, I, then I worked on Albert Brooks's second record and uh, co-wrote his first movie. Real Life. Real Life. Unbelievable. Yeah. And then, uh, and then I uh, did, uh, worked with That's Martin Mull on uh, Firm with Tonight. Firm with Tonight. And then yeah. did SNL. Yeah, so now SNL, so so after Albert Brooks, so Albert Brooks is probably how you got into the SNL on that road. Uh, I don't know. I don't know what made them torment me. Uh, <laughs> but, uh, you know, I was, I, whatever put me on their radar, I, I got there. Don't you find, I did two years. Uh, on Mad TV, and I actually worked with Martin Short's brother, Mike. He wrote on that show. Oh, yeah. And I had a couple of, like, in the two years I was there, probably 80% of what we did I hated. Mm -hmm. But there was 20% that was really sort of from a good place, and you were so proud of it. Isn't it like, like the stuff you do with Martin Short uh, on SNL specifically, um, wasn't that like the greatest uh, sketch comedy when it's going right? Yeah. Isn't it the greatest yeah. thing ever? Yeah. I mean, I mean that's my favorite thing. Yeah. I mean, um, one of the reasons I, I've been working in, in uh, London uh, last year, I did this television series over there. Yeah, Danny was telling me about the, the Nixon thing. The Nixon thing. Yeah, yeah. And uh, there is really wonderful sketch comedy on British television. Really? And it's in prime time. Go uh, figure. Uh, and, it's uh, not in late night. Right. You yeah. Know, the, the sketch comedy is allowed in prime time. You know? Stuff like in the, uh, like that's sort of uh, like influenced by... Uh, 
by S, uh, not SCTV, but um, Monty Python, like in that, in that. Well, you know, there's a line between the from the goons. Right. From Peter Cook and Dudley Moore, Beyond the Fringe. To Benny Hill. <laughs> well, Benny, Benny Hill's a... Right, that's what I'm saying. He's another part yeah. of it. Yeah. But then through Python, and these, there are shows that are just beautifully done, really funny, great great characters, you know. I mean, my wife and I watch them. If, you, if, you've, got, well, if you've got YouTube, if you've got the internet, right. uh, go look up Harry and Paul on YouTube. And go look up uh, Armstrong and Miller on YouTube. Yeah, I love English comedy. Fall <laughs> down... Freaking funny, you know, and they they just do these wonderful characters, and you don't have to know any background or anything. You just get it right away, I think. Um, and so, yeah, I mean, that's all I want. You know, when I got there, I thought, well, this is all I really want to do. Yeah. But then they don't let you do that. They don't lot. let you do it at yeah. all. <laughs> yeah. I mean, <laughs> no, exactly. I, I I came as a writer and an, a member of the cast, uh, and uh, the cute thing was that the rest of the cast were told that I was hired as no, a writer. I, again, I heard you say this. Uh, On Stern. Th- th- yeah, to my, yeah. Old, my old boss, Howard Stern. Yeah. Uh, who, your interviews with Howard are always my favorite. There are two in particular. Well, there have um, only been two. Yeah, yeah. Oh, really? <laughs> yeah. yeah. yeah okay. <laughs> two in particular being <laughs> the, <laughs> the entire no, genre. It's, it's funny. I wasn't, one was before I was there and one was after, uh, after I was there, but I, I've listened to both of them in their entirety, and uh, he, he really is great with you. You can tell he's a fan and stuff. But... Um, uh, that is, having worked for television shows, the story you tell about Bill Murray telling you at a Nick game, I mm-hmm. believe, that, that Lorne Michaels told the cast that you were hired as, as a, writer. a writer, and yeah. you were told you were hired as a performer. Yeah, I can't as imagine, a both. Right, I can't imagine a more toxic situation. Like, I mean, that's You are really exactly right. <laughs> <laughs> but I can, I can tell you some more toxic details. You yeah. know, that it just got worse. As a, you know, I, I, uh, I think of myself as a smart guy. Right. So when I found myself in that situation, I thought, I can figure this out. Yeah. I can outsmart this guy. Right. So every week I, can, I formulated a different plan, a different war game for how to deal with this. Uh-huh. Man, he checkmated me every it's week. Just, it's just a frustrate you. It was amazing. Wow. It was amazing. But isn't it because it's not about outsmarting him? It's because he does have all the pieces in that situation. I mean, you're, you're, Well, he has the power. Yeah. But he's also a, a, a maniac. Yeah. And... Uh, <laughs> and <laughs> You know, he'd rather th- do that than uh, you know go watch a Nick game. I have a sto- I have a story of about it. Who wouldn't do anything <laughs> rather than watch a Nick game? I have a story. No, I not sh- this year. Oh, I want to share with you because I actually had a meeting with Lauren about uh, right after I was. How on late TV. was he? <laughs> he I, okay. You know what? Well, can we take a break? <laughs> I, wanna, I, I really want to. The break will not be long as long as how long Lauren made wanna, him wait. I want to tell you this story because you're the greatest person in the world to tell this to. 